We're going to learn step by step on how to solve this. This is the y-axis and this is the x-axis. In mathematics, this is also minus x-axis and this is minus y-axis. To solve this problem, step one, resolve for the x-axis. Summation of all the forces acting on the x-axis is zero. Theoretically, for equilibrium, it is zero, but it has a value now. Let's consider all the x-axis. This x-axis is what? 8 Newton. East. Does it have an angle? No. So no angle. It's east. And because it's going towards the east, it has a direction. Next, let's consider 5 Newton. If this 5 Newton comes down, what will the 5 Newton be on the x-axis? 5 cos 37. This is for the x-axis. What of the x-axis for this? What will I have? Because it's coming down here on the x-axis, it's going to be minus. Why minus? Because the arrow is pointing towards the negative. So it's going to be minus 10 cos or sine. Cos, good. Why cos? It has contact with the x-axis. 53 degrees. Use your calculator and type 8 plus this minus this. That will become the force acting on the x-axis. 5.975 Newton. We have obtained all the forces acting on the x-axis. Step Two, summation of all the forces acting on the y-axis. Three is moving towards what? Negative y-axis. And it will be what? Minus three. You know why it's minus? Yeah. Now, we have ten and five. Why do you think I should not consider eight new thing in step two? It's on the x-axis. Remember, I did not consider this three when I was dealing with the x-axis. 5 will be resolved to the y-axis. Remember our rule. What will it be? Plus 5 sine 37. Go back to the rules. This will be resolved to the y-axis, which is 10. We are going to have plus 10 sine 53 degrees. Use your calculator and input all this. Let's find the value for sum of all the forces acting on the y-axis. What do you have? 7.995 Newton. We are done with step one. We are done with step two. Yes? He said he got a different answer. Like he confirmed your answer. But he got a different answer. Step 3. Step 3 is R squared is summation of all the forces acting on the y-axis plus summation of all the forces acting on the x-axis. This will be squared and this will be squared. If this squared leave here, everything here becomes a square root. So our R becomes what is the value for the summation of all the forces on the y-axis? Y-axis, 7.995. 7.995. What is the summation of all the forces on the x-axis? 5.975. 5.975. Next, remember to square each. Then, square root. Use your calculator to tell me the value. Enter everything inside the square root. This squared, if you remove this squared, on the other side it will become a square root. 9. 9.995. 9. 
0.98 Newton. Step 4. We want to look for the direction. The direction will be in theta. And we are going to have the tan inverse of summation of all the forces we have obtained on the y-axis divided by the summation of all the forces we obtained on the x-axis. You close the bracket. Here, we are going to have tan inverse of what is the value we obtained here? 7.995. 7.995. Divide by, for the x axis, we obtain 5.975. 5.975. Close this. Use your calculator to solve this. What do you have as the direction? What do you have as the direction? The angle. 53.975. 2, 2 degrees. The direction is 53.22 degrees. Step 5. In step 5, you now represent everything you have done in the final diagram. The diagram is a Cartesian plane. This is the Cartesian plane. This is minus x axis. This is plus x axis, this is plus y axis, and this is minus y axis. After you have done this, next, look at your x value. Is it positive? Which is 5.975. So it's going to be here, positive. And we're going to have what? 5.975 Newton. Right? The y axis is it positive? 7.995. This is positive. Here, this is positive. 7.995 Newton. We have represented this and this. Next, the angle is what? 53.22. And we have this. This angle is 53.22 degrees. What did we get as the resultant force? 9.998 Newton. This is 9.998 Newton. This becomes our final answer. We have resolved all the forces acting on this object. There is an object here. And all these forces are acting on this object. What we have done with calculation is to determine how the force is acting on the x-axis, how all the forces are acting on this object on the y-axis. We have determined the resultant force acting on the object. And we have determined the direction of the resultant forces. Finally, we represented our final diagram. It is your turn now to follow all the steps to solve the problem. Are you ready? Using all the steps I have shown you in the example in 15 minutes, I want you to show me step by step on how you are going to solve this problem. Start.